video in the series about Bergmuller's Opus 100 studies. So that one you heard, you might have recognised, it was the very end of the arabesque, which is number two. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at the arabesque. Now, there are lots and lots of videos out there on YouTube showing you how to play it, all the technical things going on. So I thought I'd take a different approach and we're going to look at the harmony behind the notes. So here's a score. The, um, no, no editorial marks, by the way, no phrasings or anything on here, because I just want us to focus on the harmony and the structure of this whole piece. So it's really important as teachers and as students that we understand what's going on behind the notes. To understand the harmonic progression is really to help you understand and to be able to deliver the piece with a much more uh, purposeful and meaningful um, performance. So let's have a little look. Let's get stuck on into this. Let me see if I can find my pen, which is over here, of course. Um, now, first thing to think about harmonically is what's the key of the piece? What's the key of the piece? So we're going to have a look at the key signature, of which there isn't, and we're going to look at the tonic, find out what the tonic is at the very end. Let me get my, my pens going. Here we go. And this will show us here the tonic, just there. At the bottom there's the A and there is no key signature we know therefore this is in the key of A minor there's an A, a in there and just to reinforce that what does Bergmuller start with a lovely A minor set of A minor triads there so I'm going to focus mostly on the on the bass line because that's really where the, all the harmony is generated from there's no point really in looking at the top line the treble or the melody until you get the bass line um, really firmly sorted out. So here's that A minor and you can see that continues for quite a while until we get to here in bar five where we have a change. Now if I look at that I can see A, D and F, A, D and F just here. However, which of those is the root? I'm going to put it in traffic light position as you might call it. So they're all equally spaced apart and I end up with the D at the bottom. D, F, A, which tells me that is the root of the chord. And D, F, A gives me a D minor chord, which in the key of A minor, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D is the fourth note. This is the fourth chord. So this is um, chord four. And so let's go back to here. This is what it gives me in bar five and then it returns to the A minor chord. And then, oh, this is a bit different. Just listen to the sound quality. Here's a minor chord, here's a major chord, and this, you can call it the chord of C major. However, what does it tell us in the key of A minor? Well, that would be chord three, but it's a bit more significant than that. Listen to it from this bar here. We have that we have a perfect cadence. Here we have chord five. Oh, you've lost me. Let's go back again. Okay, just give me a moment. I might have to cut that bit. There we go. We're back. Um, you've got a chord five here, five seven just there, and another five seven there going to a chord one. Five seven, five seven, very scribbly on there, doesn't it? But I'm sure we can cope. So we have a perfect case in the key of C major. Yeah. So so um, Bergmuller has modulated to the relative major to C major. Let's just listen to that and see how he gets there. I'm going to go from bar six, which is here. This one going. There's our A minor chord. It's our pivot chord, really. And then here's our. C major chord, second inversion, and then 5-7 in chord in C major, sticks with it, and then we're back, straight back into A minor, and it just provides that little bit of musical interest. I know it's modulation because he has included a cadence at the end of it. We know we modulate 
when we have a cadential progression, which we definitely do. Then if we go on after the second time bar, so now we're looking at it from this point onwards, I'm going to change my colour just so you know, I'm going on here from the yellow point. So now we are back in E minor and we've got a chord five. One, five. has uses an A major chord. Now here I think he's hinting at a D minor idea, D minor progression, but he never commits, he never actually puts in the modulation, so it's more of a hint, it's just more of colour than, than a, an actual harmonic progression. So we have that, and then we come down, and again another lovely colour note in the D sharp, and then he gets rid of it. To that section again for A minor, okay, and really he stays there through to the end. But what he does at this point, he repeats what he's had earlier up in bar seven, but this time because he went near the end, he's staying in A minor. So if you can see, I'm just looking at this bit here. Okay. This is still all in A minor. Um, the the structure of the piece obviously we have a two bar intro there and then we have this section which we can call A and then we have this middle section where he reverses and the left hand has the um, has has the little pattern here um, and then we have a return of A here and then we would call this last little bit here from here onwards this is the coda yeah this is the coda it's such a super piece and students do love to do it. However, if you have that clear idea of A, the structure, and B, the harmony within it, and what happens, then you can also use it for improvisation and for messing around and lots of other interesting um, theoretical things, but all brought to life in a practical way. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little, little wander um, through the Arabesque, which is the second one in Bergmüller's Opus um, 100. Um, do download, if you like, our overview of the whole series. And I look forward to you joining me in the next video when I'll be looking at another piece. Bye for now.